Thank you very much. Uh, it's a bit hard for all of you, I know. This is the last presentation. You've seen a lot of numbers, concepts about technology. I would like to start by what does it mean for us? Because at the end of the day, um, we are here to create together a better world and make sure the governance fits with that. I'm going to give you a few dates. 2006 and 2009, my two boys turned 18, and the nicest day of their life was to have their driving license. They had it the very day of their birthday. In 2015, I bought a Tesla. And I bought a Tesla, which is a high-end luxury car, on the net with my credit card without any interaction with a sales guy. I couldn't negotiate, by the way, because the machine didn't, didn't want me to negotiate. So th this was, for me, a great experience. In 2016, I organized a congress like that on connected car, and I went to see one of my dear friends, who is the CEO of a very large car manufacturer, and we start to talk about connected car. And I really wanted to talk about connected car. At the end of the day, what we did, we talked about smart mobility. Why? Because he told me, you know, Francois, five years from now, not sure we're going to produce car or we're going to transport people. 2017, 2016, uh, my daughter turned 18. So I say, what about your driver's license? I say, I don't really care. 2017, she turned 19. I say, what about your driver, driving license? I say, but dad, I have Uber. Well, she has my account of Uber. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and you know what I mean? She uses it a lot. Or oh, I have blah, blah, car. And you know, I don't, I don't care about cars. In 2017, I'm selling all my petrol cars and keep only electric cars and smart cars. So, 2007, remember, 2008, remember, nine years ago was uh, the appearance of iPhone. So in nine years, so many things happened. I see five things who have transformed our life. The first one is usage. The main thing that internet has brought to people is the commodity of knowledge. Knowledge has been in books, in university. The boss, when you were the boss, you didn't share your knowledge. But now, with the internet, Knowledge is a commodity shared by everybody. So you, you are not smart because you know, rather, you know better than another. You're smart because you share. And the young people and internet has put us in the sharing economy. You share pictures on Facebook, you share your experience, and everybody shares. So owning something is good, but sharing something is much better, especially with the young generation. Second is the development of technology. Uh, with the explosion of the fiber, the 3G and 4G, the power of iPhones, with the power of the cloud, you have access to everything anywhere. The geolocalization allows to buy something where you are or order a car. And the technology has dramatically changed um, the, the, the the picture of where we are right now. Third is sense and symbol. When I talk to our kids or young people, or students, when I teach, uh, sense makes a lot to them. They don't want to be or work uh, in an environment that do not care about the planet. They do not. I remember all my life when my three kids went out for my Range Rover. I was very proud to have a trophy car and say, "Dad, too much oil. We don't want to travel in, into this car." And the other point also is car is not anymore something to celebrate your success in life. It's a commodity. I remember when I got my driving license, my first car, it, it was something very, uh, very important to me. Four, emergence of new trends. We always, um, we spend a lot of time, of course, in the traffic jam, but also there is emergence of smart cities um, and smart cars and whatever you call that. I was in Riyadh last week, and there was this big announcement about Neom, the 500 billion US dollars investment into the next generation city. It's around smart cities. It's around uh, uh, eco-carbon. And now, 
everybody talks about smart cities, and it is, it's at the plan at the state level. And last, it's ubiquity in, to, in terms of the choice of what you want to do. As an example, if you want to go from A to B on Google Map, you can walk, take a train, take a bike, or whatever. When you order Uber, you can take a small one, a big one. If you go to London, you have six different um, categories. So in nine years, there has been a huge revolution driven by technology, driven by sense, be, uh, driven also by the abundance of some sy symbols. Just a quick slide. I don't like slide, but this is um, quite interesting uh, to see. If you can learn that, not the previous one. I just want to uh, give you a short update on where we are on connected cars. There are three types of connected cars. The most advanced by far is Tesla. Tesla has not only a 3G uh, card in it, it has intelligence, it can drive by itself. Last week I drove between Brussels and Paris, 240 kilometers without touching uh, the steering wheels. And I came in, in Paris as relaxed as my wife and I could do SMS, I know it's forbidden, but really, I was cool. The second type of connected car is car with some technology inside, but your uh, iPhone or smartphone is a, the kind of modem. And the last is your smartphone, because the, smart, the smartphone embarks so many uh, technology with you. What would look like the next generation autonom autonomous car? It will be like a saloon. You will be comfortably uh, sitting in it. You have seven types of um, autonomous car. And again, here, Tesla is something, is the, is the brand which is the most advanced. By 2021, we'll start to have uh, lots of cars autonomous. And it's a me too strategy driven by most uh, of the car manufacturer. I like um, this slide because it, it, it looks like what the future uh, will be. There will be different types of connected car. There will be connected car where they're connected together, or connected car, smart cars, connected with the environment. Each of us has been, have been to some emerging countries where in the center of city you have 3,000 different objects, so you have donkeys, you have bicycles, you have cars, you have trucks, and there is zero accident. Why? Because they all are connected to, to, to each other. The donkey is connected to the bicycle, connected to the truck, the motorbikes. If you take 3,000 connected cars, it's the same. They will have a software between themselves with a hierarchy with rules. There will be never an accident. If you have 2,999 cars, one donkey, there will be an accident. So you need to connect things with some algorithm, some logic, so that they can, be, uh, they can live together. You will see in the near future a big acceleration. You all know what is the Moore's Law. The chairman of SoftBank last week announced the million. The speed of connectivity will be uh, increased by one million. The speed um, of treatment of information by one million. And the capacity in the cloud to treat inf information will be uh, also increased by one million. That means that all the cars will have a huge software hardware infrastructure, will have real-time access uh, to the cloud. And in the cloud, there will be trillion lines of codes that will make us safe when you travel, identify the danger, identify the quality of the road, or any obstacles. So we're not there yet, but it will be very soon. Thank you.